The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. Monday's here. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Logger. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbel. We'll get Connor Clark back later this week. Hope everyone's doing all right. Numbers to get in, 489-1240, 489-1240, across the Hale Varsity Radio Network. Watch the show. Stream us, if you want, on the Hale Varsity YouTube channel. Follow on the Hale Varsity Radio Twitter feed at HVarsity Radio. Different social platforms to check us out between Twitter and Twitter. And Facebook as well. Busy show. We'll check in in an hour with Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride. Some storylines to talk about. Week two of spring football. That's on our mind. Blackshirt Husker NFL or Jay Moore also says hello in hour two. And uh, hour one wide open for you. you can join us uh, in the stream or email Chris at Hale Varsity. Dot com. Find Elijah on Twitter at Herbal Essence at Schmidt underscore radio for me. We'll get to the starting five shout outs going on. So a lot working, Elijah, when you look at kind of the expectations, the intrigue of Nebraska spring football into this second week. We heard from Rule last week. We'll hear from Mr. Tony tomorrow after the practice session gets concluded some players as well so a little bit of a defensive flavor this week and can't wait to talk in the black shirt hour about what this defense can be when you think of what this defense already already is Husker baseball yes they are they are top 25 worthy they are top 25 crowned now what do you do with it in this 10-game win streak. Going to be a monster ball game in Omaha tomorrow against Creighton. Excited for that. Creighton's playing dynamite baseball as well as Nebraska finding a way to get out of Evanston 3-0. And easier said than done. 2-1, and one, yeah. 3 is just a little gravy. We talked about that going into the weekend with our dear friend Jabba Chamberlain. And uh, just good on Nebraska to keep grinding. I think the biggest thing is is their consistency. We'll dive a little further in to Nebraska baseball. Portal news for Nebraska basketball. Quiet right now, but it may not stay that way. You have William Kyle taking a gander at the Big Red today. Any more departures? Maybe. We're hearing a little smoke there. But it it sounds like with these guys that are departing from Nebraska basketball, first and foremost, thank you for all that you put in. Secondly, Fred may be loading up uh, with, uh, with, with some talent here via the portal. Nothing official, of course. And I'm not hemming and hawing. I don't have any official or sources that we can go just start blabbering here to give false hope or be wrong well there's nothing worse than getting some information on april fool's day (laughs) exactly no completely because also because continue we're also considering the context of today well no yeah yeah you think about it because you get some information you go is this the april fool's joke they're pulling on the radio host and then to follow it up if you were like, I'm here and there might be some more portal news. Everyone that's listening now goes, that's April Fool's Day. They're just pulling our like, it's a terrible day for news. It's a terrible day well, to be in sports talk right now. The, the, the NCAA is going to green light more coaches on the field. All right. So they're going to go from 10 to whatever you want to pay. So why don't we just start the uh, the vicious, dirty rumor that, that Coach Osborne's coming back to to be on top of things offensively? I mean, if we're going to just go and run with this recklessness of April Fools, hey, T.O. is back. High five. Uh, and and Nebraska will go from scoring 15.8 points a game to 76. See, I don't like the April Fools jokes where people are just lying, though. Like, which I get it. It's a joke. But, like, there's there's got to be some underlying sense of everybody can laugh at the end of the day. And I've seen way too much stuff on Twitter that is just not funny. It's just a bold-faced lie that, like, there's not even anything satirical behind it. It's just, you're just trying to... to 
to spread misinformation. Well, the, which the biggest, I guess can the be biggest, you, the but. biggest thing right now, and, and our old friend Mitch Sherman quote tweeted this early about the uh, the the breakfast runza debuting April third. Yeah, no way. That's they. That's that's one of those ones that like hook line sinker, or or you're you're just not in favor of it. Oh no, I think it's a great idea. And that's you just why, don't believe it's that, That's it's why real. I don't like them going live with it, because this should not be some sick joke to the Runza <laughs> folks. <laughs> don't, don't tempt me. You know what I want on a Sunday morning after a late night and a Saturday? A breakfast Runza. Yes, you do. And I don't like them going out there and, and just just making complete a complete joke out of this idea, because it's way too good idea to just be what an if April Fool's What joke. if they follow through with it, though? Yeah. Are you first in line? I'm not first in line. I'd be very disappointed with how they rolled it out, trying to make everyone think it's a joke. Think about think about doing the the. Uh, I mean, I assume it's bacon, egg, cheese, sausage, hash browns, hash browns as part of it. But think if you could do the biscuits and gravy runza, where you have your sausage and your gravy inside. Would that work, or would the bread get all soaked? I don't know, but let's try. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's let's reserve judgment. Give it a go. <laughs> let's just hey, it's you wake up at nine. Where the hell am I? Time for some fast food. Like that gets grease. Me, that gets me thinking. Now, could you like some sort of breakfast platter? Where instead of like the traditional runs of bread, it's like biscuit dough, but inside the biscuit dough is a whole bunch of sausage and other goodness, and then on the top you smother I the think, gravy. I think you, well, you could smother the gravy on top or have a dipping side of said gravy, mm, ooh, right? Ooh, 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 ooh. But uh, it, uh, to me, I think you could do it. It's it's, it's almost like the uh, the uh, the manly version of the the cream filled or jelly filled donut instead it's your biscuits and gravy are you calling a jelly filled donut unmanly well i love jelly donuts I, <laughs> don't, don't do that they're, they're fine okay fine i'm not piling on but i'm okay. saying you get your you know your hungry man hash browns and and you know biscuits and gravy and and sausage and, and bacon and all that good stuff and then there's there's your jelly donut okay <laughs> You're still not painting this well as a jelly donut being something that I can't have. No, you can absolutely have it. It just didn't in work fact, out. In fact, didn't work out real well in Full Metal Jacket. Oh yeah, that's well, well. <laughs> so, I feel like jelly donuts don't usually go that direction. Whenever I have no, one on a Saturday morning, no, it makes you happy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's get to, <laughs> <laughs> let's get to uh, to our starting five. And you, Grandpa, in what's up? And you, Grandpa, checking in from. Chattanooga, Black Hills, Breton says what's up. Patrick is in. KG, I am back. Good to have you back, KG. Brandon, thank you. Says happy afternoon. Uh, Brent says what's up. Top 25 baseball, absolutely, Brent. As uh, good for Will Bolton Company and that pitching staff has been marvelous. They've been fantastic uh, when it comes to uh, just all cylinders, right? For the most part, they do a great job of taking care of the baseball. They've uh, risen to the occasion on the mound. That, we'll, that uh, bullpen definitely did scare a lot of people on Sunday, though. Well, <laughs> a, until Kyle Perry came in. I mean, he was muddy on, on Friday, and he was muddy on Sunday. But, I mean, you, you had to get but, bailed but, out but, a little bit by but, your hitters on Sunday. You did, oh, yeah, you needed a little bail. <laughs> needed some bail money on, on Sunday. But that, that speaks to the team as a whole, that even sure. whenever the bullpen's off, Guess what? The offense steps up and gets it done for you on a Sunday afternoon to get the sweep. Does well, to come back. That does speak to the all-around nature of this baseball team, but there are still warning signs for why this team scares me as a team that's still listed in the top 25. We'll, we'll the, get the, the to Elijah's one, warning signs here about 440. Yeah, the number one just being what happens in the seventh and eighth inning way too often. Well, right. Uh, okay, uh, NASCAR Eric, how's it going, fellas? Uh, Tuck says, what's up, Melissa? Says, hello, Melissa, all the way from Sydney, Nebraska. Melissa, thank you for coming in. Brian uh, also is in and anonymous. Asked the uh, Zach Eady question and says this. Zach Eady is going to use his COVID year of eligibility and transfer to Nebraska. Okay. Uh, more April Fools. You want true. Uh, Chick-fil-A open on Sundays. That's, that is Tuck's wish. So there we have it. 
Uh, and Anonymous has this comment we'll get to in a moment. Uh, also, Brian's reference uh, to the breakfast food. Okay. <laughs> That'll just stay on the stream. We we're, yeah, we're just, Brian, we're just trying to help uh, soak up that, that potential booze. So, Anonymous says, 10,000 years of civilization and cabbage has never been a staple of breakfast cuisine. This suggests that runs it for breakfast is a, has an uphill battle. <laughs> is that true? Yeah, I don't Someone know. Someone at some point I, here, here's, in time here's had to have cabbage as a breakfast staple. Anonymous, I don't think, and correct me, Elijah, but the the breakfast runza idea, it's not going to have cabbage in it, will it? I would think not. Yeah, I, I don't think, uh, you're not wrong here, Anonymous. I just I just don't think, the, I don't think you go with your your runza. I know your, your runza is your, your Swiss mushroom, your Italian. I haven't had an Italian runza ever. Neither have I. But I don't know that there's cabbage in those. I don't know that there's a ton of cabbage in the Swiss mushroom runza. You have the cheese and the regular that burn the hell out of you at football games or just keep you warm during that 17 below wind chill Oklahoma Nebraska uh, entanglement every every Friday. I tell you what, there was nothing. The shout out to my uncle Adam, but there was nothing worse than being stuck in a car ride home with my uncle Adam after oh. he had three runzas at the football game. Oh, try being stuck in a in a. Uh, in a bar booth with Cranach. <laughs> Same vibe. I see you, sir, and raise you. <laughs> Four eight nine twelve forty numbers to get in. We'll hit some baseball in a little bit. Uh, Final four is set. UConn absolutely dismantling Illinois. That was ugly. That was disgusting. I I thought UConn could could win and win easily. I went with Illinois. Was way wrong on that. I owe the room a steak and a beer potentially. But Illinois just looked awful. Out of sorts, beat up. Nothing going at the rim with uh, UConn's lurch in the post. So, uh, you know, UConn's there. Bama's looking good. That'll be a pretty good ball game, potentially. Bama plays good basketball. We'll have our own uh, SEC correspondent with the weekend edition coming up live from the Final Four. When old Garth Glissman sent me a text this morning, I, I thought he was asking if we wanted to go to the Final Four. I, I misread. Uh, he'll be at the Final Four representing the SEC, so G-Unit will check in with us here this weekend from the Final Four. But let's be clear. There's probably only one championship game that everyone in America it's would Purdue really and UConn. turn into. Yeah, Purdue-UConn. And, and you'll be back for it because you've had some championship games that have been flat-out rock fights. Last year's was not great either. There wasn't much excitement. You'll get national excitement for UConn and Purdue. And and, and there's a little bit of buzz with the two DJs in NC State. They're fun. They're a fun squad. They've reeled off a billion wins in a row. They stay hot. I saw this on Twitter, and it was really pretty cool. There's a, a, a North Carolina man who uh, his, his father passed away, so he visits his father's grave, you know, pretty regularly. And he's buried at the, uh, the same cemetery as, as Coach Valvano. And all of the, the, the fanfare with this NC State run, uh, you know, all, 41 years to... The, the the mad dash and NC State's miracle run in 83 with Wittenberg and company. There's so many wolf pack basketballs and pennants and good luck buttons. And so Jimmy V's graves decorated to, to the brim right now with NC State being in the Final Four. Oh, that's awesome. It, it, it was. It's really cool. I wish I I should have retweeted it, but but didn't. So one of the that's one of the best thirty for thirties ever. It is, right. isn't it? Good. They all kind of sit around a, a bar room and just reminisce. Uh, so we have more comments here on on the, the runs of discussion. Uh, and your grandpa does want to ask about the other bunny. Uh, Chris's wife is she related to the Easter Bunny or the wrong bunny? Yeah, maybe this week all of the uh, bunny paraphernalia will come down at our house. Either that I'll j- or I'll just leave the puppy out a little extra longer and he'll take it down himself. How was your Easter? We're 20 minutes into the show here. We haven't got how, good Easter? It's fine. Went over to, to her folks, had ham, 
Had lots of ham. It was incredible. And then I uh, grilled a steak for Junior last night. We sat, we sat down. So it's not too bad. It was good. Yeah, he was there and uh, ran a couple errands. Crashed. Had like a three hour nap. It was incredible. Got a workout in and back to it. See, I uh, had some time with the family. Watched Casino last night. First time. Uh, it was first time. Yeah. Wow. I, I had I had enough of an idea of the story. It had been and that it wasn't surprising. It was a good movie. Awesome I, I, movie. I, I give it a solid phenomenal five, four stars out of five. Joe Pesci, incredible. Yeah. So that Sharon was, Stone, fantastic. That was nice. And then I learned after that casino was uh, over, which was yesterday evening, that my roommates decided to go to the Easter after party at their cousin's house, which I didn't There's know there was Easter after party. Apparently there was. So I was dealing with my roommates who treated their Sunday night like a Friday night. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. We had we had one that <laughs> that ended up sleeping on the couch at the cousin's house, and I went, "Have fun at work tomorrow," <laughs> which uh, I don't think he did. No, you you pass out on a Sunday. That's uh, <clears throat> <laughs> hey, uh, Jeff Snitley checks in from the Boulder Peace Treaty, the Kalachi Factory in Omaha has breakfast runs as they call Kalachis. Uh, you can get eggs, you can get bacon, you can get cheese, you can get sausage, and ding, 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 you can get biscuits and gravy. So that is, I need to know, Jeff, uh, what you draft and if you've tried them all, or if it's all in one, if all of those ingredients are in one. Some spring football thoughts. Uh, Purdue is offended. We're talking football. We'll tell you more. Hail Varsity continues on a Monday. And now, and now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Back with you, it's Hail Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. The uh, email is hot here on the uh, the breakfast runs thing. Uh, as Jim emails in, Chris at HailVarsity.com says, Biscuits and, and gravy runs a yes, and why not? And I love Jimbo going top rope here. The chicken fried steak runs up. Now we're just getting obscene in a great way. How would that work? You put your chicken fried steak and gravy inside the, 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 the bun. I like the concept. Mm-hmm. I wonder about the execution. Again, it's, it's the problem of the gravy being inside the bun. Does that make your chicken fried steak then soggy? Does that just make the entire bun all soggy? I think we have to go back to the I, idea I think of... You, I think you just suck it up. <laughs> these, are, these are important questions to be had, I think. <laughs> like, like the, the gravy sauce in a dipping cup makes a little bit more sense to me in that case, but then I wonder, like, the chicken but fried steak is already in a handheld. Look hand yourself in the mirror, though, and say, <laughs> yeah, can I, uh, can I get three sides of gravy? <laughs> I mean, listen, if you're sitting down and you're doing chicken fried steak or, or biscuits and gravy, you, you know it's slathered. And if you're at home, there's no one there to judge you. Yeah. And the waiter, if you ask for another side of gravy, they're just going to kind of give you one of those Robert Redford, Jeremiah Johnson nods of approval. Because it's another two bucks probably. So the side is an option. But then we get into, all right, the little plastic things they put the sauce in. You have to go a whole different. This has turned into a Seinfeld episode. You have to go completely different with the side, I would think, so it stays warm versus the normal side you get for your honey mustard or ranch. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's a fair point. So I think you just throw it I in think, the sandwich, and poor Elijah just has to eat with gloves. I just think incorporating- <laughs> Soggy or not. Incorporating a liquid- of that kind into Arenza would 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 just introduce a world of problems. You, you will need to to go uh, casino mafia dinner scene with the napkin under your chin. So when you take that first bite and it blows up on you, the uh, the Sunday best doesn't go go uh, go to the cleaners. I think you could, if you're going breakfast, you can just keep it simple, a la hot pocket, and you know have your eggs, your sausage, your cheese in there. And you're going to burn the hell out of your mouth. Uh, KG says, look, a veggie chili runza would be the greatest thing known to mankind uh, since early parole for good behavior. <laughs> oh, this this is a now this is an idea. Uh, early parole. No, some sort of cinnamon roll runza that you can then dip into your chili. Mm. The dessert runza. 
like a cinnamon sugar run, so that that's kind of a churro churro esque. It's 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 somewhere around a churro or a cinnamon roll, and you get to dip it in to your chili and have the most Nebraska combo. Now that's an idea. Hmm? I'm not sure how you'd go about carrying that out fully, but that's why there's people who make more money than me to sure. do so. It, it wouldn't have the liquid issues of gravy. But, okay. It has the dipping of the chili. So runs is going to make more money off of it because people are going to buy that, that side cup of chili to go with their, Mm -hmm. their dessert runs. Uh, That's an idea. Uh, Anthony Sargent weighs in, asks a fair question with as much food and booze as you guys consume. How do you not weigh over 300 pounds? I think uh, as of recently, the past year or so, we've talked about food more than we've actually consumed said food, and that's maybe why we talk about food so much. Actually, we just, we kind of pick our spots with food. We'll get back to football here. And so this was this was a pretty good story, and I give credit to Sam McEwen from the World Herald uh, with it. But you have Purdue football, and you know Purdue basketball's rolling; they're incredible. They're they're doing nice things. They're in the Final Four for the first time since 1980. But I want you to to think about everybody in the Big Ten now the the Great 18, not not 10, but but 18, and. Uh, you had a, a survey go out, and right now, from from hardest to easiest, and you rank everybody in the Big Ten, and the winner slash loser, when it came to who's who's the easiest team to to beat in the Big Ten, or who do you most most want on your schedule in the Big Ten? Who's who's the yes at, at last call? Right? Who's going to say yes to you on prom? and say, all right, I got a date. All right, sweet. Purdue's that team right now, and they are using it as a, a bit of a rallying cry this spring. Uh, 18 out of 18 is where they're ranked. Now, if you flip it around, teams you, you don't want on your schedule, obviously you're looking at Ohio State, Penn State, Oregon, Michigan. Those are your four. But I want to ask this question from a Nebraska perspective. Uh, wh- where do you think Nebraska falls in that hierarchy or power ranking of 18? Power ranking-wise, Purdue comes in at 18. Everyone thought Northwestern was going to be a pushover. What do they do? They go, they go to a bowl game and they win eight games. They found a lot of fight, Northwestern did. They really galvanized under an interim coach who actually uh, ended up Coach Braun getting coach of the year and and just steering the ship the right way. But from a Nebraska perspective, where or where does Nebraska come in with the power rankings? You look in, on one hand, Nebraska's power rankings, defensively, they are, are presumably up there with what's returning, with how well they played, with as big a headache as they were and how well they took to it, and you get Tony White back for a second year. Offensively, you've got a returning offensive line with the most combined starts in the league, which is nice. And you have question marks at quarterback and at running back just from a can you do it every down, every game. From the running back standpoint, you've got a lot of youth at quarterback, and you you had a a 5-3 and starter in Harburg that's polishing up his passing. Uh, with Nayor and uh, Banks coming in at wide receiver. Those are two guys that have played major college football, a lot of snaps, and uh, they can get the, the young wide receivers who performed well, performed well at a, a high level uh, into a, a, a different tier. So, and Anthony chimes in. He says Nebraska's top eight in the Big Ten if they are healthy. I agree with that because your your top tier, your middle class, and then your 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 we'll just call it low income Big Ten teams. You're gonna figure that it's a lot of the the same, and then you've got your newbies. Um, I think Nebraska's right there with the Wisconsin, right there with an Iowa as we project spring and beyond, and they'll have a chance to make a case with how they look at Ohio State, how they perform against UCLA, how they perform uh, against Iowa at the end of the season on the road again. Uh, Wisconsin's in there on the 23rd. Time to beat Wisconsin if you're Nebraska. 
And, oh, yeah, by the way, you're out at USC the middle of November. So you have some big dogs to take down as well as handling your business, much like the baseball team we'll get into next segment has done game in, game out. There's been very little lack of focus. You've gone out, you've done your job. That's where I don't worry about this football team doing it that much. And what we haven't had, if you're a Nebraska fan, is just a whole different level of talent level. You, you just you just haven't. You've kind of been the same squad with the same struggles or some worse inconsistencies on offense where it's been a big play versus that steady, you're good for two to three drives a half that's going to eat clock and get points. It's been the turnover bug, too. To, to me here, and before we get to Chris, who's been yep. hanging on the line here, I don't have much to say on this aside from like you compared it Nebraska to the Wisconsin and the Iowa, I agree with that. I'll add USC to that list. They're as well. middle class, fair. Yeah, yeah I'll add USC to that list class. because I see USC with what they're coming into this season with. Obviously, they might have a little more talent in reserve with the way that they're able to recruit high four stars and five stars mm-hmm. under Lincoln Riley. But you know what their offense is going to be. Their offense is going to likely be even without Caleb Williams, with the amount of talent that they have, probably a top five offense within the Big Ten. Their defense is a huge question mark. They they've, had to be, they've had to be top five. Yeah, you don't know what their defense is going to be. It's a new coordinator. It's a new scheme. They brought some new talent in, but a lot of question marks on that defense. When you flip around and talk to Nebraska, I think people around here and people within the Big Ten are pretty confident Nebraska's going to have a top five defense within the Big Ten next year based on what they put out there last year and the returning They were top they six a year ago. The question that you have with Nebraska is the offense. The offense was putrid last year, similar to how USC's defense was pretty putrid. You have a new co-coordinator coming in that's looking to retool the offense. You have some new talent you've brought in. How does it all mesh? How does it all gel? That's the question. I see like USC, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Iowa, the teams that you wouldn't put in the top five, but you probably would put in the top 10. So we're between that, that six and 10 range. Mm-hmm. I see all those teams as a little bit interchangeable. Well, I should say seven and 10. Mm-hmm. So I, seven and 10 is where I kind of have all four of those teams. I see them in a similar grouping. Can you make a move, assuming a Michigan drop off or... Oregon stumble. I mean, Penn State, where are they at? They're in flux, but, you know, nine and three in this Big Ten is going to be pretty damn impressive. Chris, thanks for your patience. Welcome into Hale Varsity. Go for it. Hey, guys. Schmitty. Um, so I'd love to sit here and tell you that I would slot Nebraska in the top six or top eight, but until we're not, you know, minus uh, 75 mm-hmm. in turnovers, um, they, they are where they are, and that's probably in the definitely in the bottom half if not the, the back end of the whole thing. Um, you know, it's, and then to, to get into the more in, important discussion, I, why mess the good thing with the runs? Of, like, why? <laughs> I, uh, like, Elijah's sitting here trying to say, you know, well, let's do a, a dessert run so that you can dip in the chili. I'm like, brother, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. So let's <laughs> just let that one Don't lie. make that sequel like Caddyshack did, is what you're saying? That's, that's what I'm saying. So okay. I could, yeah, back to the the football, like I mean, I, I'm 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 excited as anybody, but I mean, come on, like we we got to we got to do it on the field, mm-hmm. like you can we can project, but it really I would have a hard time projecting anything. I, I hope that mm-hmm. we're that we're good, and I hope that we don't you know turn the ball over four point seven times a game on average. Um, but until we prove otherwise, that's where I'm at, fellas. No, hey, you got to see it to believe it. Totally get it. They've got to take care of the ball. They've got to be better on third down. We're, we're nitpicking on the, the, the defense, Chris. Appreciate you listening, man. Thanks for the phone call. 489-1240 or 800-825-5865. Again, these are projections. Purdue is projected to be 18 out of 18 with a power ranking. Uh, Nebraska, where do they start? Where could they finish? You know, are you are you still holding on to that stock with Michigan? Not all they lost. Ohio State looks trained to kill, and Michigan State uh, with Jonathan Smith, man, there's there's talent there in Sparty. Do they do they jump up? But so we'll one, continue on. Here. There has been one thing though to, that's been a trend in the Big Ten recently. One of those teams that's kind of in that mid tier tends to jump up and make a run at it every single yeah, year. You can't. Yeah, you're not always uh, owning. You're renting a lot of spots. Hail Varsity Radio is live. Now, back to Schmitty. Schmitty's a great guy, but he don't have a brain. And Elijah. You want me to speak? When I point you, yeah. On Hail Varsity Radio. Back with you. More of your comments in the stream. Hail Varsity YouTube channel and 
Always get the podcast, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play with Hale Varsity Radio and find us on the social platforms, Hale Varsity Radio Twitter, uh, at H Varsity Radio, AM 590, Omaha's ESPN, and right here at KFOR Facebook and Twitter, Central Nebraska Superstation, uh, 1460, 1550, and then News Talk 900 in Columbus. So Andy checks in with the turnover margin uh, with Chris's call. Last segment, open phones for you here till 5. And since uh, in uh, 2023, since 04, that span, Nebraska's minus 104. That's a bad temperature in uh, turnover margin. So uh, that has been uh, problematic. Uh, Tuck, when it comes to the, uh, the breakfast runza, and Chris's take was, if it ain't broke, don't don't try and fix it. And runs are are incredible. Tell this guy changes is inevitable, and we're changing it this year. And runs added mushrooms and swish and cheese. Everything has changed. So you can always tweak the menu, and then take it off. Right. Um, uh, Dion is checked in, and Dion. One of his comments was about being in that that fifth spot in the Big Ten. And, you know, it's 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 something to, to look at. He says, I can't get excited finishing fifth every year. Dion, I, I hear you, but it's it's way better than what it's been in the Big Ten. So that's step forward Two, if you get to five, presumably you can keep climbing. So is this April Fool's or not that's been circulating around since noon? And I haven't seen anything on any of the, the major sites, Florida State and Clemson in the Big Ten. What's your take on that? I think they're SEC bound because I don't believe F- Florida State's AAU approved. I would think Clemson is, but I don't know that. So the Big Ten will not take anybody that's not in the AAU as Nebraska fights to get back in there. It's Thoughts? Uh... It's an interestingly timed April Fool's joke. I don't think that will be the new. I mean, I know they're trying to sue to get out. Where are they trying to go? I mean, could that be a either way storyline six months from now? It's very possible. It's, oh, they're, it's they're, definitely April Fool's go- for today. If, if they don't start making eighty million a year, <laughs> they're gone because they are sick and tired of making thirty to forty million dollars a year and being on that playoff doorstep. And then once that happens. It's the fall of the ACC, and there's barbarians at the gate to go pick the, the conference clean. You know, that's just how it shakes. Husker baseball, 3-0 and this weekend. They sweep Northwestern, a comeback, extra innings win, 8-7 to yesterday. Kyle Perry, uh, tip a cup to that guy. As he came in, did the job, uh, Nebraska – uh, really got, from their pitching standpoint with McConaughey, he settled in after a little bit of a rough start. Uh, you had Christo also settle in after some runs on, on Saturday. And Sears also got touched up a little, and then Nebraska just exploded. Nebraska was so good in the clutch yesterday specifically and they were able to, to get that sack fly in the ninth to get to, to extra innings after Nebraska gave up a three-run shot in the eighth to relinquish the lead. But you just like how this team comes to work every day at the ballpark. They're going to be ranked. They are ranked, excuse me. Uh, they're 22nd. They've got a 10-game win, win streak going. I mean, all things are rolling right now. And here comes Creighton that has had way too much success against you uh, the, the last several years, and Creighton is scoring a ton of runs. They look super high level. And if we want to talk down the road here, region regional host, I mean, Nebraska and Creighton, you have three games. It's important to take the series against your in-state rival anyway, but there's so much extra to it this year, Elijah, because of how well both teams are playing, and this is your last rodeo, so to speak. I mean, I know Maryland and and Iowa loom as well in conference, but from a strength of schedule and and our RPI opportunity, this is this is your last giddy up in non conference for it. And 
Right now, Nebraska's 11th in RPI. They're 40th in strength to schedule. You, you have an opportunity, specifically the last three series of the year, where you pretty much have to win or you're really penalized uh, before uh, regionals. So, big one tomorrow night. We'll have plenty on it tomorrow night. But you just love the approach and kind of that clutch ability yesterday, despite uh, things not going swimmingly. Nebraska had to battle back where they had the lead, they lost the lead, and then they, they found a way to get the win. And that's what you want in a baseball team. Again, that grittiness rising its head. And for a team that's on a 10-game winning streak, man, I, 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 I struggle to say it's true. I lack, I lack some confidence in this team. I am more confident in this year's team than last year's team, don't get me wrong, but I'm not as confident as I was in that, that 2021 gritty beats pretty squad just yet. There's still some doubts in the bullpen. You're still against a, a team in Northwestern that isn't that great. I know you get the sweep at the end of the day, but it was not a nerves-free sweep. There were some very, very nervous <laughs> moments over the weekend. You're asking a lot. You don't want a soggy runza, and you want a, you want a nerve-free Sunday on getaway day in Big Ten baseball. But, but, but like that's was the importance of that Kansas State game last week, and that's the importance of Creighton tomorrow night. Mm-hmm. It's kind of that litmus test against a good team to let you know how good is this team actually. Because they've beaten the teams that they're expected to beat, that mm-hmm. they should beat. They've beaten some which of those a, teams. Which is a step, because they didn't do it last year. Exactly. Last couple of years. Exactly. And they've, they've beaten some of those teams they're supposed to beat convincingly. Some of them are, spo- are a little bit more nervous than you'd like. At the end of the day, that can just be baseball. Baseball is one of those sports that doesn't matter how many runs you lead by. You have to go throw pitches across the strike, or across the strike zone, and you have to give batters a chance to go out and hit it. That's baseball for you. Sometimes guys don't have it. Sometimes the other team is going to be seeing pitches really well, or they they get a pitcher whose pitch mix tends to complement what they like to do at the plate. That all happens in baseball. That being said, you have an opportunity tomorrow night against Creighton, which is a team that you maybe thought, are they a paper tiger? They don't have the strength of schedule Nebraska has. Then they go and beat Stanford in two out of three in Palo Alto, and that's kind of that wow series for them that makes you go, all right, this Creighton team is legit this season. The same way you think this Nebraska team is is much better this season than they were before. Now it's a chance to go out and prove it against good competition, both for Creighton and for Nebraska. It's one game that that is a great measuring stick for Mm -hmm. yourself against another team that is really hot and has won a lot of baseball games this year to say, how good are you actually? That's what tomorrow night can be. It's not the BL end-all if Nebraska loses that game, and it's not the final confirmation to me, hey, this Nebraska team is going to go host a regional this year if they go beat Creighton. There's a lot of of the season left, Mm -hmm. but it's a great measuring stick type game tomorrow night because we know this Nebraska team is good. We know they're better than last year. The question still remains to me, how good are they? That's fair, and... Right now, you've won 10 in a row. You're at 20-5. and five. You've got Maryland looming. You've got Rutgers on the horizon. There's Iowa. But we know that the Big Ten as a league is just not going to have that juice. Mm-hmm. So that if we're asking how good is Nebraska and we're not disrespecting, it's, it's, re, it's reality where they were right there early in non-con. You turn those losses into wins, there's some proof – on the field there. We'll wind down hour one at Tail Varsity. And now. And now, back to Hail Varsity Radio. Back with you one final time this hour at Hail Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. More comments when it comes to the breakfast runza and, yes, Husker football and Husker baseball. So, Kevin down in Texas on Kalachis. So, just to set the record straight... Kalachis are fruit filled or sweet. The the bread filled with meat is called K L O B A S N E K N E K. What? Klobanasek. I can't read or spell or pronounce, even though it's part of the profession. Uh there's some very Czech looking like umlauts in there. That's not umla. I don't know what it is. The little, the little, the little thing of a jig over. Klobasek. Do we say that? Klobasnik. Sure. Klobasnik. Oh, it is Czech. Look at that. So ask any German woman behind the bakery counter in Central Texas, and she will enlighten you. I got to get down to Central Texas, Kevin. And, uh, yeah, the, the German part, I, I guess I should know that. Steven can says— I say, Can I say, around here, I understand there's, like, trademark stuff you have to look out for, but it, it's a runza. No matter what you want to call it. No, I, I understand the trademark uh-huh. side of things, Yeah, but they're all runzas. If, if you're making them— 
you 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 rename it <laughs> or the season to this. No, if you're selling them, yes, so then, you yeah, ha- yeah. then you have to find another alternate name. Uh-huh. But everyone around here will know it as Arunza. So Stephen checks in and says this, and this is not April Fool. This is email in here to Hale Varsity, according to a former Bell West coach, Coach Woodard. There's going to be a presser later tonight concerning Frankie Fiddler, Chucky Hepburn, and William Kyle. It's uh, on his Twitter feed. Hope it's not an April Fool's joke. Okay. Uh, Todd checks in. You I, guys. I have not seen that on have not, yeah. Let me go look into that. Uh, Todd, our friend Todd, says, have you guys ever tried the chili cheese omelet, just a basic omelet with a can or three of Hormel chili dumped in? And... Uh, all over, and then you top it with some shredded trees, sh- sh- shredded cheese, not trees. That'd be gross. Uh, so delicious, you won't know what happened. Um, Todd, good idea. Uh, the chili omelet sounds fantastic. I found the uh, the, the news on Kaya Hepburn. That was from faux Coach Woodard, so I can only uh-huh. assume it to be so a... So it's faux Coach Woodard. I can yeah. only assume it to be a, uh, an April Fool's joke. Dion back in with where the power rankings go. Nobody will ever give a crap outside of the top five or six in the Big Ten. No, you got to agreed, Dion. You got to be in that top four for a playoff spot. But if you're five or six, that doesn't mean you can't keep climbing to five, four, three. And if you're if your bar is top six in the Big Ten every year, I think you'll you'll take that. If the worst you ever do is top six, that means you're on the right path. You're pretty consistent. You're getting good quarterback play. Your defense is good. Your run game's fine. And that turnover Achilles heel has been at least numb. Well, let's look at a team that over the past couple of years has been top four. I think in the future of the Big Ten, that kind of translates to a consistent top six. That's Penn State. Yeah. And I think based on where Nebraska's been in the past couple of years, if Nebraska can turn into a team that's like Penn State in, in the next it. couple of seasons, you will take that in a heartbeat. Oh, easily. Easily. A lot, e- lot, lot harder to do. Yeah, Because, exactly. you know, Penn State's just rolling uh, to that 10 or 9 win uh, number every year. They don't beat Michigan, and they've uh, w- taken a bit of a breather with their signature win many years back against Ohio State. Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, next. This is Christian Peter. I'm sorry, but the stories I have about Charlie are not appropriate for the public. The right case of the Mondays. It's Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, on Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, Tower 2. It's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. We say hi to Mr. Blackshirt himself, Charlie McBride, a Monday with Charlie. Coach, how was the weekend? Thanks for the time today. The weekend's always good here. You just, <laughs> there's nobody around, and it's been like that all winter, and it's great. Well, that is own the whole place. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Well, you know, we'll we'll get into some some thoughts with spring football, and we we got into a weird topic with uh, with it being April Fools and and not sure what to believe with the potential for a for a breakfast runza that it may be coming out, uh, and if Charlie McBride. Oh, that- were to, to do a, a breakfast runza, what would you put in it? Well, everybody, you got to put eggs in it, I suppose. And it, and and I I would guess runza and eggs and uh, and onions and I don't know. You know, it's kind of hard. I I like hot stuff, so I put jalapenos in the thing, Ooh, and I yeah. I'd be I, I'd be happy with that. I'll tell you. Okay, so coach, you're going with eggs, you're going with jalapenos, a little onion, and maybe are you sausage or bacon? Well, yeah, the other if you if you're going to have a different kind, I think you got a choice. I think you have to, you know, make them with a choice, one 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 or two different choices and uh you know, that ought to keep them quiet for a while. <laughs> See, my thought is, my thought is, if you ask me sausage or bacon, I say yes. So you say, you say both. Might as well. Let's, let's mm-hmm. stop you. Charlie, the question from first hour, me and Schmitty had the disagreement. 
Do you worry about the structural integrity of a Runza that's made with gravy, such as a biscuits and gravy Runza? The structural integrity, I just don't think, could work. Well, I don't know. You could, uh, uh, you know, if you really wanted to do it, uh, just put some chorizo in it and mix it up Ooh, with nice. the Runza. <laughs> And then put some peppers in there and, and all that stuff and see how she goes. That but, uh, that's a win. I, you know, I think that I think they're you know they're they they stick they stick with what they did. And I know uh, you know for a while Valentinos did too. Mm. But uh, you know they they went they went to uh, sorted things. So I don't I don't know that maybe they're feeling that it's the runs itself is. Uh, just not, they need something else, you know, mm-hmm. to go with it. Oh. We'll uh, we'll see how it shakes out. What's truth or rumor <laughs> on on uh, on on April Fool's Day? Big uh, big week, Coach. It's second week of of spring football practice, and uh, we'll hear from Tony White tomorrow. I want to ask you this question: As there's been some power rankings that have been put out and those power rankings slot Purdue in at 18 out of 18. They're, they're ranked as the, the easiest or air quote worst team in the Big Ten heading into 2024. Now, those are just opinions and in, in, in comments out there and, and Purdue's taken note of it right there they've got a big old chip on their shoulder where do you think nebraska could start from a power ranking standpoint there's one through 18 you figure ohio state's in at one well where do you think nebraska could start out of 18 teams well i think you know you're looking at i i would look at the same as they would without the new teams in there i think i think that's going to be the that's going to be the problem, but I, I I would guess that they'd be just above the upper half. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's what, I mean that's what I think they 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 should be, you know. And uh, you know, anytime you're last and and um, you're picked last, it's not going to happen. No, okay. That's true. <laughs> so Purdue won't be the last. I promise you. You know. Because uh, it always works out some other way. I mean, the whole the whole thing is. I kept a couple of years. I kept the you know the uh, uh, power rankings, and it didn't even come close. In fact, one year we did won, we won a national championship. I think we were picked, actually picked third. Mm. You know, and and I think it was us in Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma and Missouri and us were the top three, and I, we were third. So you kind of bring up a good and we point, both though. we beat them both. <laughs> you, you kind of bring up a good point with these rankings. No one really knows anything this time of year. If you go back to maybe not this time last year, but if you fast forward a couple months following Northwestern scandal, where they picked, well, they're picked in the the basement of the Big Ten West. Everyone has them finishing last. Man, two and ten, three and nine. What does Northwestern do? They go finish second in the Big Ten West. So I think you kind of do bring up a good point of if Purdue's getting picked last, the one place you can expect they're not going to finish is last. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think they will. I, I don't. I can't pick the team that would be. I'd have to look at the whole thing and and go. You know, see what see what happens. The the, the a lot of times people get uh, carried away a little bit with the uh, uh, recruiting aspect of it. Uh, but it it is a it is a point. I mean, it's a it's a ten to twenty percent. You know. Uh, the thing that you ought to think about when you're when you're making up your mind is to what the power ranking is, and uh, I, I think our recruiting's been good, and so how many of those guys are gonna are you gonna uh, are gonna participate in the top you know, two teams? Let's say uh, you'll have probably quite a few in the top three, but I mean in the top two teams. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to say, uh, because you just don't know at this time of spring ball after spring balls over, you may say, Hey, there's a quarterback that came up. that's Superman over at, you know, Michigan state or Michigan mm-hmm. or something like that. And, uh, 
or a team that's down, say Purdue. I know there's been a couple of really good recruits go to Purdue. Um, you know, and can they make a difference? That's that's a big thing. Guys that can make a difference are guys that rush the passer. Mm-hmm. That they're the guys that can make a difference in your ranking for sure. Charlie McBride's with us. It's Hale Varsity Radio. A Monday with Charlie, Coach. If if we look at that pass rush. How do you like what Nebraska projects to be? They were really good against the run. Uh, there's still work to do, and I expect to hear all the work they're doing to to be a better product, but not a finished product from Coach White tomorrow with his media availability. But you had a lot of young guys, Len Hart and Prince Will, that were freshmen last year that were impactful. Uh, you know, the polar bear got after it and was really good at collapsing the interior of the pocket. And then Ty Robinson's back. I mean, Nebraska had all sorts of bodies and options to get after the quarterback. What what type of, of jump do you think they can make? Because that's what it's about. They're not they're not resting on being a top 10, 10 defense. They want to be uh, the best defense and they know there's some work to do. Well, the one thing is, is that you know I, they, they they do some things different probably up front than I did. I, I always uh, every play was a pass. Okay. And 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 you 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 play the core, you play the run on the on you know what you read. And actually, we were reading the adjacent lineman. We had a guy over us, but we were really reading the adjacent lineman. We know where the guy in front of us is. And a lot of times, you know, uh, you know, guys don't will will concentrate on young guys, especially beating up the guy in front of you, and not know what the guy on the right side's doing or the left side's doing, and not know where the quarterback mm-hmm. is. You know, I I know I remember John Farrell came off the field when we were playing Colorado. And he says, you know, I'm rushing the passer and the quarterback's looking at me. You know. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things that you don't look. You have to. Your your pass rush is going to depend. You may say, "I'm going to do this." Okay, I'm going to try this on this guy, and the pass comes off, and it's a sprint out. Well, you know, you're going to that whole pass rush is off. What you're thinking, you know, and it's those guys that can make that quick decision and make a play out of it. Is are, are the guys that you know that look for, and you get you get that through repetition. I mean, it just the matter of keep doing the you know if you have favorite things to do, keep doing them, keep doing them, keep doing them, and then pretty soon you'll see about everything there is to see, and you'll know you'll know what you want to do once they once you know it's a bootleg or it's a, a waggle pass or it's you know a play action pass or whatever it is. A lot of times you'll study the feet. You'll study, uh, you know, from a draw to a screen to a, to a um, you know, a, a sprint out pass type of thing. And a lot of times their feet will tell you. Some co- some coaches teach that with the outside, especially with the rush ends. They will teach a, a lot of that where their feet go. And, um, you know, so it, it's all it's all up to, you know, I think what how you teach it and what, you know, what you do. But, you know, and, and I think our guys would did a lot of it mentally. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're going to get to the guy they, they, no matter what, you know, and that's kind of the attitude you have to have. I mean, you just have to have that. And, uh, you know, and I think once you penetrate, you can cause some wrecks in the backfield before the, before the runs even get started. Charlie, to, to add to that point you're making, one of the things that Jeremiah Searles told us, I think this was a couple of years ago now on this show, but it's always stuck with me, is that one of the most important things a defense can have is a guy in that front seven that's a game wrecker, the kind of guy that an offense, their entire week of prep has to circle this guy and say, if we don't take care of this guy, nothing that we want to do offensively we will be able to accomplish. Would you agree with that? Yeah. And are there any candidates that you saw from what Nebraska had last year to be a game wrecker in this upcoming season? Well, most of the most of the time, that's the tr- that's the that's the case. I think, you know, if you go back and look at what Iowa 
Campbell, you know, who mm-hmm. was, a, yeah. I mean, he was just a solid player. And he was a guy that, uh, you know, you didn't have to, you kept your eye on him in film and you knew where he, you knew he's going to be around the football. And I think it, it's your second block, if you, you know, that, that you're looking for him. On the line of scrimmage, you just got, you, you got, you know, the guys with the down linemen have down linemen most of the time. They're just, you know, in general. But when, when those, when those, those guards are going after linebackers and things like that. They have to they have to anticipate a lot of a lot of times because uh, of what of what the play is and what you see on film that he does. And uh, you know if he's if you're running a sprint out and he's a guy that you know that 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 runs through if he runs through a lot. A lot of times you'll see a backer come right through the line of scrimmage, and that's because everybody's taking, you know, they're all taken up with uh, different players, and and everybody's got a job, but you can get through there, and and sometimes they're allowed to do that if they feel they can get to the quarterback. And uh, so there's all, I mean, there's so many things you have to prepare for. And the other thing is uh, safety blitzes. I mean, <laughs> those, you know, those, those that, that's where I think our defense, I think, is is really got some got some stuff going for it with that fifth defensive back in there. You can do a lot of different things with those guys. Let's go to that fifth back and the the role of of an Isaac Gifford and coach in the latest video chasing three. He's been really doing great stuff from a leadership standpoint. The guy's a tackling machine, and he's back for, for another year. That hybrid mm-hmm. spot is, is so so big, isn't it? I mean, it, it's really yeah. uh, important yeah. for a defense to have a guy that's that versatile, correct? Yeah, it's almost, it's almost like a guy that's instinctive. But, um, we had a kid uh, that, that was a guy that could block kicks. I mean – he was a linebacker. He's starting linebacker, but he could block kicks. So he goes to pro ball, and he goes to the Oakland Raiders, and I called Robin Ross, who was the linebacker coach, and I said, Robin, how's he doing? He says, we can't cut him. He <laughs> said, you know, he says, we just, this is a guy you can't cut. He's blocked five kicks already this year, you know, and he, he, led, he led the league one year in, in block kicks, punts, and, and field goals and stuff. He had that knack of doing stuff, and uh, you know we had we had some linemen when we dropped linemen. Even uh, you know we had guys that were you know were always around the football, mm-hmm. and some that didn't have a clue what was, what you know what was going on. It, you know, but some just have that that natural instinct, and that's where he pays off. Uh, you know, he was like that in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a tackling machine there. And, um, you know, so, you know, Gifford's got got a little bit of something going for him in, in that in that uh, respect. Sometimes those are the kind of guys that don't go exactly like you want them to, but they make the play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sure. And, uh, you know, so, you know, that, that, that that's what I think he's got uh, – the ability to blitz and he's got the ability to play the run and he's got the ability to play on air. And that's, that's what, you know, he can do all three things. Coach, uh, we'll check in with you next week, maybe gear up a little bit more towards uh, some spring football and some NFL draft. How's that sound? Wow. When is the draft? The end of the month? Uh, Yep. Coming up here the 25th. Yeah. Well, that's, That'll be something. They're going like heck now. They're probably, you know, try to get a hold of somebody on the phone and talk to them. You won't ever do it. (laughs) They're always working. They go night and day in this stuff, and sometimes it's overdone. Coach, we look forward to it. Thanks so much for the time. Okay, thanks, guys. Talk to you next week. Bye now. All-State, two-year starter, and rush in for the Big Red and NFL vet. He's Dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. It's Blackshirt Jay Moore with Hale Varsity Radio.
Back into it at Tail Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal, Black Shirt Husker, NFLer Jay Moore with this at jmore44 on Twitter. And you watch him with Big Red Wrap Up. Jay, what's a good word here uh, into week two of spring football? How you doing? I'm doing well. Got to uh, hang out with family uh, with with uh, with Easter this weekend, so I got to see everyone and have some uh, good meals, you, you know, some cocktails and stuff. So uh, good to catch up with everybody. Um, and then we're back at it. Mm-hmm. It's Monday and time to uh, get back to work. Jay, any April Fool's jokes pulled in the Moore household today? Um, none that I know of. <laughs> uh, not yet. Uh, I hope I don't have any. I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm not much of a prankster myself. I, I, I'm a firm believer in karma. That's my thing. I feel like you're going to try to do something to someone else. You're going to, it's going to come back even worse. So I, uh, try to be very weird, wary of, you know, my surroundings and just how you, you know, you treat other people. Cause it's going to come back, uh, in some other form and fashion. I just, I just, I don't. I don't want that hanging over my head. See, back in the day, in, in the herbal household, whenever you had the the sinks that had the separate sprayer, mm-hmm. you know, you know what oh, I'm talking yeah. about. You'd put yep. the rubber band around the sprayer so that when people would turn on the sink, it didn't spray them in the shirt. A harmless prank like that was always the the Elijah go to. But now you have those like two in one faucets that also have the sprayer on them, and it, it's not the same anymore. That used to be the good one though. Mm. Well, Sterling Schmidt, the Bernadoodle puppy, took a vicious deuce. Uh, this afternoon in front of his mother. That was his April Fool's gift. And uh, he may not see uh, his first year. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, that's all I got for you as far as pranks go. Are you a, are, are you a ham guy or did, did the Moore household go elsewhere? You know, we uh, I like ham, mm-hmm. uh, but we had brunch. So Good we kind of went with, um, well, we had a nice spread, you know, like business, business and gravy, um, scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage. You know, we had kind of a little bit of everything, uh, cinnamon rolls. It's more breakfast, but we just had it later, you know, mm-hmm. later in the day, about 1130. Uh, we got together with my side of the family uh, Saturday, and we just went out to dinner. You know, had some, went to a local spot up in Omaha that had some nice Mexican, some margaritas. So uh, kind of checked off both boxes there, you, you know. So, yeah, it was, but ham's fine. I would, ham's, that's not a problem with me. But uh, I would eat it if they had it. But, you know what, my, my mother-in-law's business and gravy is some of the best I've ever had. So whenever she makes that, I am not uh, upset at all. That's a win. That's absolutely good. I mean, if I'm in the right mood, I would take biscuits and gravy over like a nice steak. Honestly, depending on the mood, it's not all the time. It's not like yeah. if you put both of them in front of me, I'm always going to pick the biscuits and gravy. But if I'm in the right mood, 11 a.m., you know, that brunch Steak, time, Easter, eggs ooh. and biscuits and gravy. Right. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's yeah. just get fat get together. <laughs> yeah, let's just clog the, clog let's the just, hearts. Let's, let's just make that tread, treadmill scream later in oh, the day. Heart attack by 45. Mm-hmm. It's okay. <laughs> you know what? You went out smiling. So, Nebraska, I don't expect a ton of smiles. Maybe some encouragement from Tony White tomorrow with his media availability. About three to four players should be ready, too, after practice. And, you know, we'll see what players uh, emerge you know maybe nash likely maybe robinson and then you know a third option for sure chasing threes episode was a heavy feature on isaac gifford that was really cool to see his his grit but also where he's grown as a leader and that's where i want to start before we get into tony white and you know more defense uh more defensive thoughts from you but Jay, it's it's easy to to talk about vocal leadership. It's easy to talk about, you know, actions speaking louder than words. But at the end of the day, you got to have a handful of guys that are able to hold others accountable, show the young guys how it goes, and then also be that that guy that's respected with his voice, with his play but also his off-the-field actions. And, and that's, quite frankly, a hard trifecta for everybody if they're under that microscope. Yeah. 
the you have to i mean first and foremost leadership it has to start you have to show it on the field you have to produce uh your your talk you know your has to be backed up by you know what your your performance if you are if you're a guy that talks a lot and can't back it up you're not gonna be a leader there's no validation going on but when guys like isaac gifford ty robinson nash hutchmacher you you know a few other guys in that defense specifically they proved it they proved it on the field they proved on the field for a couple years now and so when they speak you better listen and you better understand because they've been through it Uh, they've been through multiple coordinators position coaches uh, and they've been through you know a lot of these guys obviously they've been through a lot of losses uh and unsuccessful football but i think developing leadership it's not it's not the easiest thing to do some guys are naturally more quiet more lead by example uh some guys are you know if they speak you listen and uh and some guys you know you got to be careful too because you could it kind of could you talk you talk too much it kind of starts to go in one ear out the other as well so it's it's a it's a fine mix of of everybody you can't just be a yelling and screaming it's you know it's like being a coach right you have to know when to push buttons when to you know kick them in the ass and and when to give them a hug you know you have to have that you have to have that sane mindset as a leader um as a player just like just like a coach has has to go about his business and then you know you're going to lead primarily with the guys in your position group in that meeting room you're gonna you can step up there and talk and take the laser pointer and, and talk guys through certain situations it doesn't have to be the position coach uh and isaac gifford can get up there in in the db room and talk guys through young players through uh nash such and ty robinson can talk guys through it doesn't have to be their position coach so there's numerous ways you can go about becoming a leader and developing a leader and approaching it obviously winter conditioning is a, is a great time summer conditioning is a great time uh just getting in those uncomfortable situations because that's when leadership really steps up is when everyone is kind of backed up against the wall and they don't want to be there and they're tired uh and you know they're they're on the you know the one of the hardest workouts or one of the hardest practices of the week so when that leadership steps up says hey watch this i'm gonna go you know i'm gonna take you guys um, i'm gonna put you guys on my back here and get you through it so it's it's a it's it's a fun thing to talk about, and it's I, I know damn I know darn well that these guys are going about it in the right way. Um, so you feel really, you know I feel awesome about that, and um, you know it's, and that's kind of the cool thing. One of the things that NAL's provided is guys are sticking around longer, and they're able to play and um, and have a lot of experience, and they can talk young players through it. You can have better communication with the coaches. Um, so it's kind of a, a, a pretty cool ordeal that a guy like Luke that they featured in that that uh, Chasing 3, but you know, a lot of these guys have been featured. And I have a very high expectation, you know, for Luke and for Isaac. Uh, excuse me, Isaac and uh, Nash and um, Tr- uh, Ty Robinson and a, a bunch of other guys that played at a high level because, you know, they, they showed it last year, especially these young guys. Well, these young guys played at a very high level this last year, and they gotta they gotta come up and validate and show they can improve and, and take the next step. But um, that core, those core guys on that defense, they're they're I'm just glad they're on our side. It's Jay Moore with us here on Hale Varsity Radio, talking the defense and uh, steps they can use to improve here in the spring. And Jay, as you talk about that that experience and the leadership, the, the man at the top, Matt Rule, has said it, I believe twice already this winter that. Yeah, an extra offseason with the guys with all the returning talent gives them some time to get better and improve before next fall. But it also gives the opposition, the other teams, a chance to see that 3-3-5 on film, see the guys that Nebraska is going to be putting out there and attack it differently than they did last year. Is that truth? Is there anything behind that? Or is that something that the man at the top says in order to motivate his defense and to make sure they're not resting on their laurels through the offseason? What's your take on that? I think there's a little bit of both. Uh, Matt does a very good job of utilizing uh, the media and speaking in public uh, to kind of throw out messages and and uh, hidden agendas, if you want to call them that, to to his players. He uh, does a really good job. He knows they're listening. He knows they watch. They can see all this stuff on social media. 
Um, so I think there is something to that. But I mean, that's the beauty of the three three five. And if someone is gonna, uh, you know, there's plenty of game film. You know, obviously. Minnesota did not know exactly what they're getting themselves into starting game one. Now they could have pulled up Syracuse film from last year, and they obviously I'm 99.9% sure that they did that to study it. Now they got into the game, they might have readjust because some things that they saw that he did at Syracuse were a little different than he did at Nebraska. You adjust. But then going forward, every team had the had the game film. So you're constantly always going through that battle. And, and good coaches know what you can get away with uh, – away with during the season to tweak things if you have a young team and you know you can't put too much on their plate you got to stay pretty basic and you just know that you just hope that your guys can make plays get off the field and need to maybe create some turnovers because you can't get too dynamic with what's being called and what's being kind of done midweek in the game planning because you just can't put that much uh can't put that much on young players place on the flip side though with the depth and the um you know, some of these guys who have tons of experience in this defense, you can you can start to get a little more dynamic. You can start messing with alignments and just really expand what this defense can, can become because these guys have played a ton of football. Uh, it's the second year within this defense. They know what's expected. They know what the verbiage is. They know how to communicate. They know what to look for in, you know, certain down and distance scenarios and what play calls, you know, because there's always a strength and a weakness within the defense. And you got to understand where you're liable and where your weaknesses are at as a, as a defense. And sometimes you can, I would imagine Isaac Gifford's like another coach out there. He can kind of tweak some things within coverages and how guys are kind of lined up pre-snap to make changes and say, "Hey, let's mm-mm, we're in we're in cover nine. We're going to we're switch to cover six or whatever it may be." Uh, there's certain things you can do as older players that you just the the leash is a little longer mm-hmm. with with those guys. So. Um, not too concerned. I mean, listen, you, when you got dudes out there, and Nebraska has some dudes defensively, it's you could you could line up pretty basic, and your guys, your your guys, your best players are probably going to win a majority of the time. So, I, I think Coach Rule is keeping those guys. He wants you know their feet kind of held close to the, to the fire a little bit, but man, I you you deal with this stuff every season, and you just know what you can do defensively with what you have as a team and what uh, Coach White knows he can kind of put on the place of his players. But uh, I expect if the same, if not better, for this defense going forward in 2024. I think the the thing with, with Coach White and, and having the front he does, you go back to that Minnesota example, I mean, it's a different different dance, different deal. Uh, that they had to deal with. I mean, that's that's what's special is Nebraska's got a couple of giant playmaking anchors up front with Ty and Polar Bear, mm-hmm. and everybody else can eat. And you may know what's coming. You still got to gotta stop it. And it'll be interesting to see what type of jump the defense makes from really, really good to great. Jay Moore's with us, Blackshirt Husker NFL or Blackshirt Hour. It's Hale Varsity Radio at jmore44 on Twitter, and he is, of course, co-host of the Big Red Wrap-Up Show you catch on uh, Nebraska Public Media. Jay, if you had one critique, we talk strength and, and weaknesses. I think we all think Nebraska tackled well for the most part last year. I think we, we thought Nebraska had multiple hats to the ball. I mean, it was always a crowd for the most part. Uh, I thought Nebraska was super physical. I thought they got after the quarterback okay. But if if you had to pinpoint a weakness, is it pass rush? Is it third down getting off the field? Because there were a lot of third and longs that, that in bad times got completed. Which those two could go hand in hand. Sure. Mm. But if you had to give me a weakness, circle it for what they're working on for 2024. Yeah. Whew. They did so many things well last year. Initially, when you're super nitpicky, but I, yeah, yeah, I but love your perspective. You know, I mean, I th- one of the best things that they did was sudden change, <laughs> turnover situation with offense, and get put in awful situations. Their ability to hold a, opponents to field goals after sudden change. If there was a stat for that, I don't know if there is. They had to be leading the nation. I feel like in in sudden change defense. 
I would say pass rush, and it's hard to you know. I, it, I'd like to think they can create more turnovers, but he, I think last year it never was it never was going to be enough because the offense just coughed it up so so uh, so often. You know, I think they did a good job at times of creating turnovers. The uh, I know like the Illinois game, uh, Purdue game. Um, you know, they they had some they they made some plays they needed to. Uh, with turnovers, I, I think the ability to get after a quarterback and not have to create pressure by bringing an extra guy, I think that's probably where I would go mm-hmm. uh, is can you get home with three or four? And I know more likely four, even in a 3-3-5, three, three, you're usually bringing an, an extra guy, a linebacker as well. I think if you can get home with those four and not have to get creative on your pressures to 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 – to put more pressure on that quarterback, I think they could probably improve there. They did a he- heck of a job at that times last year. I think that Northwestern game, you know, the ability of Nash uh, create havoc back there and tie, but winning on first and second down, that's that's big. Uh, people know you're going to probably bring pressure with with multiple guys, probably bringing five six guys on third down. But man, if you don't have to, if you can sit back there with seven guys in coverage. Six guys at times, man. I tell you what, it just the extra pressure. I mean, just a half a second getting to the quarterback, just that that much quicker. Just the timing and just just the comfort, the you know how the quarterback sits in that pocket. His eyes start moving quicker. The timing gets starts uh, thrown off. So, I think just the ability to get to the quarterback without without blitzes, without doing anything unique. So hitting home with you know, four guys rushing. I think that's just where I would like to see them take that next step. Now they've done it at times uh, last year, but just being more consistent with that, just to, you know, get your, get your back, but your back in your secondary, which is a lot of the guys coming back in that secondary still this from last year, but just give them an extra sec, half a second, man. That's, that's going to make the world a difference in, in, in my mind. I mean, again, it's very, it's very, very nitpicky, but, that's where that's one area, especially with Nash and Ty. I mean, just adding another move to your repertoire, pass rush, and just understanding uh, protections and what offensive linemen are trying to do to you and scheme you, and just learning things where you can just counter here and there. That's going to pay off huge, huge dividends when they get in those, you know, second and eight scenarios, and they can just, you know, they hard run set play action, but they can counter it with a swim or whatever it is, a rip, a chop, uh, a club or something. And just to get some pressure you, when you're not bringing anything, that's that's when that's when this defense can really take that next step forward. And Jay, as an added little benefit of some pass rush, Memorial Stadium is a unique, unique place with the black shirt tradition that like a sack might get a bigger cheer might be a bigger momentum turning play than almost anything else in the game and I think if you can get the Memorial Stadium crowd crowd behind you can lead to dividends not just for your defense but for your offense as well because of of that effect that a a big pass rush can have whether it be a sack or or force that that quarterback to speed up his process and force him into a mistake you think about what it can do to get the crowd involved in the game those big defensive plays can be so huge for this defense in 2024 if they can get some of them yeah there's nothing better than Get off the field with a sack on third down. I mean, for defensive linemen, there's no better high that you get playing that in, in that game, that stadium, or any just playing football in general. And you, it's third and six, and you get back there and you win on you win on your first move, or you counter and you get home, and you get them. There's nothing better. There is absolutely nothing better. Uh, you, you, I think you know sacks. They are. It's what gets you noticed most as a, as a defensive lineman, it's t- tackles for losses and sacks. Now, some people say sacks are, can be overrated and I could, I could listen to that argument, but again, it's the ability to create the pressure, get, get around there, get them, you know, get a hand on the football, you know, just, it doesn't take much to get those guys a little skittish back there, uh, but obviously you can get home. And I know it's, it's tougher now because you can't, I mean, you hit a guy just a second, a step too late, or you graze his helmet, or you do something, you get him hit him too low. It's it's roughing the passer, and it's 15 yards, and it's automatic first down. Now you want to talk about a absolute backbreaker is when you think you got have a sack and it's a roughing or whatever it is. 
um, and you get, keep that you know momentum going for the opponent's offense. But getting getting off the field on third down, you get off the field with a sack. That is that is defensive lineman's dream, and it always will be. Last thought, Jay Moore with us. Jay, yay or nay on Happy Gilmore too? Have you been contacted? To, to be in it, and uh, do you like moving forward here, uh, risking, of course, the legacy? The other part of it is it, it could be awesome. And, and do you have a shirt yeah. at home that says, uh, guns don't kill people, I, I kill do. people? <laughs> Did you wear yeah. that under your jersey? <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's the that's guy that got his the nail gun in his foot, right? <laughs> yeah. If I'm casting, I'm casting Jay Moore and Happy Gilmore, too, for that role. You, you can't you can't cast the Bond villain. Sadly, he's no longer with that, us. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'd seen some stuff. I think it'd be, I'd like to see, it'd be fun to see. Uh, I don't know. It's it's tough, man. Those It's like them trying to redo Dumb and Dumber. It just, it's, it's hard to do, it's hard to do remakes, you know. I think, I, we can just, you know, this could be a whole different segment of remakes of movies. The second one was, you know, halfway decent. I thought Major League Two was still pretty good. Major League Three was up nowhere near. Burn it. Obviously, the first or second one. You just think of other, you know, Mighty Ducks sports movies. You know, the second one is okay, but that's tough, man. I just don't. Um, who that? Who I've who I've seen them trying to cast? You know, the characters. I, I, it it works. It works, but just trying to get it all put together. I don't know. I, I have a feeling it probably doesn't happen. But if it did, I'm if it gets made, I'm watching. Oh, There's sure. no doubt about it. I mean, have you guys seen the second Roadhouse? I not did not yet. know they made a second Roadhouse. I was there whenever they uh, they filmed the octagon scene actually, at the UFC event. Yeah, yeah. They had yeah, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal is is the man. It's um, oh gosh, the main character, and I can't think why he came is Dalton. Dalton, there you go. Yeah, and it's it takes Roadhouse, a bar. I just watched it the other night. It's on Amazon, and um, it's not. Listen, it's. I mean, it's, the movie's what forty years, you know, apart in in time frames, but mm-hmm. uh, the cinema, the technology has has been vastly improved. But it's okay. It's not. It doesn't have the same cachet as the the, the original Roadhouse, but it's uh, J- Jake Gyllenhaal's character. Is uh, is pretty entertaining. Did you see me in the upper levels? Was, what, did they include me in the no, movie? I, 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 no, I was, I was on the upper deck during that fight scene. So, was that in Vegas? It was in Vegas. Yeah, it was uh, the, the the John Jones and uh, Cyril Gane fight. So, uh, in between the, the prelims and the main card, they had that little the walkout and the fight scene, and I'm somewhere in the upper level. Huh. More you know. I didn't know that. No, it's you got to take a minute, Schmitty. Yeah. Okay. Watch it. It's worth your time. I will I will commandeer the, the Amazon channel tonight and say family movie time. <laughs> see how yeah, it's, what's the, yeah, it's um see how long that lasts. Yeah, there's there's some char- there's some appearances by a lot of other people in the movie too, so it's uh it's good. It's not it's still it's I don't I'm not hyping it up too much because mm-hmm. it's it there's nothing better than the original Roadhouse, man. That's but they got the they got the the fenced in, you know. The fence around the band to protect them. <laughs> the like chicken the wire? Original. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Uh, yeah. Jay, we'll check in next week. Thanks for a few minutes today. Yeah, thanks, guys. Good to hear from Blackshirt Husker NFLer Jay Moore and holding his breath for Happy Gilmore, too. Saw Sandman on Twitter do the old happy drive and was talking smack to Shooter. We'll wind down a Monday at Tale of Our City, powered by Cornhead Logger. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. One final time, a Monday edition of Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Plenty to talk with Husker Baseball tomorrow. We'll dial in. Jabba Chamberlain with us to talk Big Red and Creighton. Mitch Sherman joins us tomorrow. And Michael Bruns with 24 7. Uh, We'll get his take, some recruiting thoughts as well, spring football, plenty of comments from Tony White and players available tomorrow. We'll have it for you. Podcast uh, the show, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, where you can download. Also find us on the Hale Varsity YouTube channel. Like and subscribe there. 
Catch us that way in different platforms, KFOR, Facebook, Twitter, AM 590, Omaha's ESPN as well. We're streaming the show live on Twitter on their handle. And, of course, hear us, Central Nebraska Superstation. And, uh, as always, uh, check us out, News Talk 900, 489-1240, numbers to get in. So, uh, a thought or two, Elijah, as we wind down, Jeff emailed in, Zach Eady to be cast in Happy Gilmore 2 as Richard Keel, a.k.a. Mr. Larson, the guy who had the Guns Don't Kill People I Do Uh t-shirt. He was a Bond villain. Uh, That's not bad. The monster that is Zach Eady with just an incredible run in the tournament in a Final Four date. So we did. Could work. We should note here as we talk a little basketball here, we did some breaking news during the show. And it's something we we kind of hinted at in the mm-hmm. first segment as being you don't want to be the guys that are idiots on April Fool's Day. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jamarcus but now Lawrence, it's official. Yeah, Jamarcus Lawrence has entered his name into the transfer portal. So we didn't want to be the idiots that got duped by an April Fool's rumor going out there. But uh, uh, this is not official from Jamarcus, but there are enough media reports out there that Jamarcus mm-hmm. Lawrence has entered his name into the transfer portal that I feel comfortable going with it now. Yep, uh, Sauter, of course, with Hurt at uh, Jacob uh, with the Hale Varsity and Hurt at Sports. Robin Washett uh, out with that news as well. So, you know, Jamarcus really was just fantastic for Nebraska, especially his role, how he accepted that role, and he was so key. He's a two-guard man that can light up, uh, great stroke and good to the rim as well, and you're going to miss him. Uh, in Lincoln, but I, I think Fred's got something up his sleeve here with the portal. You look at the portal, and I, I don't want to – just because I'm throwing a name out there does not mean I have any inside information on his his like preferred landing spot, but you think of a of a starting five. Let's throw it out there. Aaron Eulis, who mm-hmm. should be back off suspension next year, playing the one. Bryce Williams is a big two guard for you. That maybe is – we look at Will Churney, look at Jamarcus Lawrence mm-hmm. – as being like, oh, man, you didn't expect him to go. Could be a logjam there if Bryce is playing the two mm-hmm. full-time next season. At the three, do you look at a guy in William Kyle? This is a name I'm saying I don't have any inside information on, but do you play William Kyle at a three and go with a big lineup that way? So you have 6'5", Williams at the two. You have Kyle at the three. You've got Rink. Mast, You've mast, got... mast at the four or at the five. You look at a guy in Omaha Blue. Who from Iowa State. Portal from Iowa State. Nebraska was in his recruitment till very, very late whenever he first committed to Iowa State. Does that guy play the five? I know. Yeah, Frankie. Yeah, uh, Frankie's a possibility to be that three spot for you as well. Um, and then, I mean, there's other options too. I know there was a, a Juco kid that Fred was looking at mm-hmm. from Ole Miss last week, potentially being a five. If you're talking about a potential bigger lineup for Fred as a response to what happened at the end of this season, it would leave a log jam for Jamarcus and CJ. Quick uh, reminder about your friends with the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Hands on the wheel, eyes and mind straight ahead. The driver, one job, that's to drive. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back tomorrow at 4 with Hale Varsity. Thanks.